Does coffee cause cancer? It's easy to find studies that show there's a correlation between drinking coffee and getting cancer. But is that evidence that coffee actually causes cancer? And if so, how strong is the evidence? Very few people realize it, but the question of what is evidence was settled hundreds of years ago. And I'm gonna teach you how it works. So suppose that you get some information and you wanna know, is that information evidence for a particular hypothesis? Well, it's evidence for the hypothesis if it makes the hypothesis more likely. And we can talk about what this means mathematically. Evidence is any information that you're more likely to see if your hypothesis is true than if your hypothesis is false. So let's return now to our coffee example. Is seeing a study showing a correlation between coffee drinking and cancer evidence that coffee causes cancer? Well, we know that it is because you're more likely to see that study in a world where coffee causes cancer than in a world where it doesn't. But how strong is that evidence? It's absolutely critical that we think not just about whether something is evidence, but about how strong it is. To evaluate the strength of evidence, you use what we call the question of evidence. It's the only question you can ask that properly evaluates how strong evidence is. The question of evidence asks, how many times more likely am I to see this evidence in a world where the hypothesis is true than in a world where the hypothesis is false? Let's consider an example. Suppose you go to a magic shop and you buy a biased coin. It's designed to land on the same side 75% of the time. The problem is you can't remember whether it lands on head 75% of the time or it lands on tail 75% of the time. You flip the coin once and it lands on heads. The fact that it lands on heads is evidence that it's a heads biased coin. But how strong is that evidence? Well, we know how to evaluate the strength of evidence. We go to the question of evidence. In this case, that simply means asking, how many times more likely am I to see it landing on heads if it's a heads biased coin than if it's a tails biased coin? Well, if it's a heads biased coin, there's a 75% chance it lands on heads. If it's a tails biased coin, there's a 25% chance it lands on heads. Therefore, the ratio is 75 to 25, or three to one. So the question of evidence has given you a factor of three, but what do you do with that number? Well, you multiply it by your prior odds. Suppose that you think you remember that it was a heads biased coin, but you're not sure. Maybe you put two to one odds on it being heads biased rather than tails biased. Now, the question of evidence gives you a factor of three and you multiply that. So you get three times two to one odds, which gives you six to one odds. So the odds are now six to one that it's a heads biased coin, whereas they started at two to one before you flip the coin. Well, how do you apply this idea in the case of a study showing a link between coffee drinking and cancer? Well, we apply the question of evidence. How many times more likely am I to see a study showing a correlation between coffee drinking and cancer if coffee really causes cancer than if it doesn't? And the answer is that you're only slightly more likely to see such a study. The fact is it's very easy to find correlations between all kinds of behaviors and all kinds of health outcomes. When these small correlations later get tested in carefully designed experiments, usually they don't find a causal link between the behavior and the outcome, even though there was a real correlation there. A key takeaway from the question of evidence is that many people look at evidence the wrong way. They ask questions like, is this evidence consistent with my hypothesis? Or could I explain this evidence if my hypothesis were false? Or how likely is this evidence if my hypothesis is true? None of those are the right question to ask. The right question to ask is the question of evidence. How many times more likely am I to see this evidence if my hypothesis is true than if my hypothesis is false? This idea is based on a type of mathematics called Bayesianism that was first developed hundreds of years ago and it describes how our probabilities should change in the face of evidence. To learn a lot more about this topic, check out our free interactive module about the question of evidence on our website at clearerthinking.org.